Good morning, Church. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, good morning to both our online and on-site worshipers. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service. For those watching us online via our Facebook Live, we invite you to share our online stream to your family and friends by tagging them in the comments section. You can also comment down below your praise or prayer items and we will pray for you. Before we begin, I would like to read to you Magnificat as inspired by Luke chapter 1, verses 45 to 55, uh, rather 47 to 55, written by John Leach and posted by the Jubilate Group. It says, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for all his loving kindness to me day by day. Great is our God and worthy to be praised. The Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Let it be to me according to your word. God's mercy reaches, all, reaches to all those who fear him in every generation. Great is our God and worthy to be praised. The Lord has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has humbled those who are haughty and proud. Let it be to me according to your word. God has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the poor and lowly. Great is our God and worthy to be praised. The Lord has filled the hungry with good things but has sent the rich away empty. Let it be to me according to your word. God has, set, has kept his promises. He has helped his servant Israel and shown mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever. Great is our God and worthy to be praised. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever and ever. Amen. So let us all rise and sing praises to our Lord, our God. Amen. 
Pabatiin natin yung ating mga katabi ng isang maligaya Pasko. Yan. Dahil next week po ay Christmas na. So tayo po ay mga ngaroling kay God. Amen? So sabay-sabay po tayong umawit sa ating Panginoon. Tayo po lahat ay aawit. Amen? Huwag dumarating ang araw ng Pasko ay nagsasaya ang lahat ng tao ang kapayapaan ay nadarama nagmamahal ang bawat sa sa mga handaan at pagsasaya ala-ala ang kapanganapan niya si Jesus celebrate ng Pasko ay para po sa kapanganakan ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Amen? Dahil po siya ay buhay sa puso ng bawat isa sa atin. Amen? At ang tanging regalo po natin ng Diyos sa atin ay siya mismo ang kanyang buhay na pinagkaloob sa atin. Amen po? Kaya minsan pa nating palakpakan ng Diyos ngayong umaga. Sabay-sabay tayong magdiwang sa kanyang kapanganakan. Amen?
sinasamba namin, pinapasalamatan Panginoon sa iyong kadakilaan sa buhay, Panginoon, ng bawat isa. How do we worship you and we honor you?
Salamat po, worship team, sa mga awit. Good morning po sa inyo lahat. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, kung babalikan natin ang panahon nung bago'y silang ang Panginoon Heso Kristo, though we know na most probably it's not really the month of December siya pinanganak. Pero... There are some people who are expectant, not only Mary, ibang tawag natin ito sa mga mga anak na ayan, no? expectant, uh, expectant mother, uh, mga anak. Kasi nararamdaman na niya marahil yung may mga symptoms na malapit ng mga anak. Yung, uh, alam po ng mga mothers yan. And not only Mary, but Joseph also is expecting. Pero na, doon sa Luke chapter 2, meron pang ilang mga personalities na nag expect So, si Simeon, binabangit po doon pangalang Simeon, he is expecting of a Savior. The Holy Spirit revealed to him na Savior will come. And he wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And on the eighth day, 
Dalhin na Panginoon sa Kristo para ipa-circumcise at magalay ng dove. Simeon was there and he blessed the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang sabi niya, Lord, you can take me now. I've seen the salvation of Israel and of the whole world. And not only Simeon, but the, what we call Magi's or the wise men or the astrologists those times. Uh, sa pagkakunan uh, natin, tawag natin tatlong haring mago, pero hindi man po sila mga kings. They are also expecting uh, from day to day, from night to night, na nakikita nila na na-form yung kanilang sinusundang pattern sa mga stars. Sabi nila, malapit na dumating ang Savior. Di ba? Sinusundan nila yung pattern. They were the, kumbaga, modern time astrologists natin. And, nung makita nila yung time, eto na. They traveled and they found the Lord not in a danger already. Kasi it took time to travel on that distance. So, most likely, ang Panginoon is ay ang tawag po doon na ginamit na baby ay different from an infant but the Lord Jesus Christ is not an infant anymore. So, hindi na po siya na, nasa manger, wala na po siya sa manger but the Lord Jesus Christ was already in the house. So, yun po yung mga nag-expect ng pagdating po ng Panginoon sa Cruz do, those times. And baraha yung mga relatives nila. Sa atin po, sa kapanahon na po natin, we're expecting the Lord Jesus Christ hindi na po sa kanya ang first coming. Hindi sa muling pagbabalik ng minsan na isinilang na tagapagligtas ang Panginoon sa Kristo. The Lord will come again. Kaya nga po second coming. And salamat po na ang Panginoon sa Kristo po ay isinilang. Siya po yung naging masunurin sa kalooban ng Ama at nagkaroon po ng Christmas. So tayo po ay Mag-pray, Heavenly Father, maraming pong salamat po sa inyo. Maraming pong salamat sa kabutihan po ninyo sa amin. Ang season po na ito, Panginoon, ay pinagdiriwang po, Panginoon, ng maraming tao. Sapagkat inaalala po namin ang pagbibigay po ninyo ng inyo pong unique and only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Maraming pong salamat, Panginoon. Kasi kung hindi po, Panginoon, dumating ang Panginoon Iso Kristo, wala pong hope, wala pong way to come to the Panginoon. Walang eternal life. Walang forgiveness of sins. Wala pong kapahingahan ng buhay ng tao. Puro na lang po kapaguran. Pero maraming pong salamat po sa inyo, Diyos Ama, na sa pagmamahal niyo po sa amin ay ibinigay niyo po ang Panginoon sa Kristo isinilang isa po yung katawan tao sapagkat kinakailangan niya pong ma-experience ang maging fully and truly human being for Him to suffer and to die maraming maraming salamat po ngayon po Panginoon dalangin po namin na sa kapanahon ng pong ito na traditionally, Panginoon, and for whatever reason, sa panahon po ng Pasko, ang puso po ng mga tao, Panginoon, ay karniwa na nagiging malapit po sa inyo. Sana po, Panginoon, ay samantalahin po namin ng mga iglesia na mabot po namin ng mga tao. Tamang-tama, meron kaming point na po pwede pong sabihin sa kanila yung pong Christmas that the Lord Jesus Christ came to save the world at sana nga po Panginoon kami po mga mana ng palataya naman ay maging thankful po Panginoon sa inyo lagi na merong pong Pasko na ang Panginoon sa Kristo po Panginoon ay sinilang at namuhay bilang normal na tao do siya ay tunay na Diyos pero siya po, Panginoon, ay nagbata ng aming mga kasalanan. Maraming salamat po sa iyo, Panginoon Kristo. 
Hindi po namin minsan ma-imagine yung laki po ng pag-ibig nyo sa amin na ikaw na walang kasalanan ay naging kasalanan para po sa amin. Na kami po, Panginoon, na mga makasalanan, Panginoon, ay minahal po ninyo. Dinala po ninyo ang aming mga kasalanan sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Ikaw po ay naghirap. Ikaw po, Panginoon, ay namatay. Ngunit muli kang nabuhay para po sa amin. And we thank you, Lord, because kami po ay nag expect na ikaw po, Panginoon, ay muli po ang darating. At may mga signs, Panginoon, kung noong pong panahon yun ay may mga tinitingnan po ang mga tao na mga sinyales. Sa panahon pong ito, Panginoon, kami po, Panginoon, ay ganoon din na sinasabi ng Biblia na may mga signs of times, Panginoon, during these last days na malapit ka na pong bumalik. Dalangin po namin, lagi po sanang masumpungan mo ang puso namin na may pagmamahal po sa inyo, may pagsamba, may paggalang, may pag-ibig po, Panginoon. Sana po, hindi lamang po during the season of Christmas, Panginoon, na ang puso namin ay malapit sa iyo, na kami po, Panginoon, ay mayroong pag-ibig na nararamdaman, may katuwaan, mayroong joy na dinadala ang kapanahon na pong ito. Dalangin po namin at all times, Panginoon, in every season of our lives, makasumpo ka sa amin ng joy and peace and love in our hearts. Pagpalain po ang gawain ngayong pong umaga. May you bless us. May you reach our hearts, Panginoon. Mangusap ka po sa bawat bahagi ng gawain, Panginoon. Sa bawat party po, Panginoon, ng worship service na ito. Dalangin ko po, ano man po, Panginoon, ang kalalagayan, sitwasyon po, Panginoon, ng mga naririto po sa iglesia, ng mga narurong po sa kanilang mga tahanan, nanonood online. Panginoon, ikaw po ang kumatag po, Panginoon. Hinihingi ko na imit niyo po, Panginoon, ang aming mga pangangailangan sa aming mga puso at kalooban. Ama, sana po, Panginoon, mapagpala po, Panginoon kami. Hinihingi po namin na banal na espiritu na makapangirihan gagawa sa aming kalaginaan. Hinihingi po namin, ibinibigay po namin ang oras na ito sa inyo sa pangalan po ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Amen. Uh, in my quiet time this morning, the author of the devotional guide I was reading posted a question. How to honor the Lord? Uh, he said three things. Number one is, he said, our whole lives should be devoted to exalting the name of Jesus and not ourselves. We should never seek to exalt ourselves, but only Jesus. Number two, he said, speak the message of Jesus. We honor the name of Jesus when we tell the world about him. And number three, sacrifice for the Lord's honor. Uh, this was taken from the book of Ezra, chapter 2, verses, uh, verse 68 up to chapter 4, verse uh, verse 5. Uh, a little background, uh, Ezra was one of the prophets in the Old Testament. Uh, during his time, King Cyrus uh, decreed that all exiled uh, or captured um, Jews can return to their land in Judah, in Jerusalem specifically. So they were able to return to, to their land and one of their plans or goal was to build, rebuild the temple because the temple was destroyed when the Babylonians captured Israel or was defeated in war by the Babylonians. So there, one of their immediate goal is to rebuild the temple. And one way to rebuild the temple is to giving sacrifices that is their talents, their treasures, and their time. They g gave uh, generously to be able to rebuild the temple. So, according to the guide, uh, giving is an essential part of our worship and service to God. Our gifts should not be grudging or forced, but generous free will offerings. In, if everyone in the church gives sacrificially, generously, each according to their ability, God's kingdom will advance rapidly and his name will be honored. 
Let us be reminded, I'm sure that most of you uh, already know or familiar with 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. It says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must, must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, ito yung promise niya po, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, we may abound in every good works. So let us pray. Lord, thank you for your amazing grace and forgiveness. Thank you for your indescribable gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to respond with generosity and grace to your amazing grace. Amen. You may deposit your tithes and offerings by our Metrobank account uh, through bank transfer or GCash. And the details are also posted in your screens. Please save a screenshot or screen capture of your transactions and email us so that we can document your giving according, accordingly. For our worshipers here with us, you may drop your giving at the drop box located at the back near the main door. Okay, so let us ready our hearts and minds for the... Uh, our worship through the word that will be delivered by Pastor Hison. Morning. Merry Christmas. Tapasin ba nyo? December 18 na? Bilis na? Sabi ko, pag malapit na yung Pasko, magigilig ako ng more Christmas music sa sakyan. Tapos nung sa araw, ko, wow, bilis ang araw. 18 na ngayon, one week na lang. Kumusta pong paghahanda natin, mga ninong at ninang? Nakahanda na ba yung 20 na coin? Nais, nailagay na ba sa red envelope para pag dumating si ina-anak? Naging barya na, no? Well, actually, some of the reflections, uh, of course, for the past two years, we had the COVID, lesser parties, gatherings, lesser activities. But this year, napansin ba nyo? Parang more stressful, traffic. Um, pag nagsala ka ng oras ng pag-ikot sa bayan, abutin ka ng traffic. And uh, of course, uh, we look forward, we're excited. Um, Meron tayong pinagpipray na aginaldo. Sana marinig ni Ninong yung pinagpipray ko. So, what will give you joy? Kagala ka ngayon, Pasko, pag natanggap mo yung nasa list mo. At least yung top two sana, no? Out of five. What will give you joy? Um, but of course, as we celebrate Christmas, uh, we also do, do remember that there are families also who are going through tough times in, during Christmas season. And of course, we're excited. We, we look forward to gatherings. We look forward to celebration. And it is just right that we come to church and be reminded of the message of Christmas. Peace, <laughs> the message of Christmas. It's good to be reminded uh, because of all the busyness. Yeah, we want to be, be gathered with, with friends, relatives, especially families, right? You do want that. And kasama nun, kabisihan, bibili ng grocery, pipila sa supermarket na napakatagal. 
uh, pag-isipan ko anong regalo here and there, nakaka-stress. But it's good to be reminded of the true message of Christmas. And even at the start of our worship service, uh, we're glad that we sang songs na nagre-remind sa atin ano ba yung tunay na kahulugan ng Pasko. We, we heard from Elder Well sharing with us biblical understanding of the waiting of the coming of Jesus Christ. We heard from uh, Joy, uh, reminders of what it is to honor God. And today, we will continue with that. Because in the business of Christmas, we need to be reminded. I need to be reminded. Kasi nga, paglabas mamaya dyan, busy na. Uh, isipin mo na lang, nabigyan ko na ng regalo to. Ito ba? Nabigyan ko na ng regalo. Magkano ba budget ko dito? 20 ba o 25? On our way here this morning, uh, yung sinusundan namin sa sakya, jeep, merong nakaupong mama. Doon sa steps. Yung sumampa lang na mama. And I was looking at him. We were driving, coming here. Sa likod kami ng jeep. So, nandun siya, nakaupo. I was observing his face. Yung mamang yon. Nakachinelas, medyo halata mo yung suot niyang pants ay medyo luman-luma na. Pero naka-red shirt siya. Tapos may smile sa face niya. Inobserve ko yung face niya. Tapos, pero alam mo, kita mo sa face niya yung pagod at kahirapan. Mayroon mayroon siyang smile. Naka-red siya. Probably... Also in the celebration mood of Christmas. So I was, as I was observing him, uh, alam kaya niya yung message ng Christmas. Today we'll look at some passages in Luke chapter 1 and then later on Luke chapter 2. This is a record of the birth of Jesus Christ. And I'm sure many of you have heard have read uh, this passage and have heard sermons on this. But again, whatever situation you are right now, ano mang pinagdadaanan mo, napakahalaga na mabigyan natin ang paalala. Ano ba ang tunay na mensahe ng Pasko? Can I ask everyone to stand and basahin natin yung verses together? Let's read. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let us pray. Lord, mangusap ka muli sa aming Panginoon. Kami nagagalak, Pasko na. At 
maraming kagalakan, uh, pagtitipon, at gamitin mo, Panginoon, ang itong magang ito upang mangusap ka muli sa amin, upang ang tunay na kahulugan ng Pasko ay may ilagay namin muli sa aming puso. Kami po ay nananalangin sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. One of the Christmas messages we found in this passage is, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. So, nagsimula to kay Mary. An angel was sent to her. Gabriel. Okay. So, in the Bible, we find the existence of angels. Okay. Maring bago ka sa pananampalataya, maring hindi ka pa masyadong na-involved sa Bible study groups, at meron ka mga katanungan, uh, meron ba tunay na anghel? Tunay ba yung angels? Okay. So sa Bible, we will find them from the Old Testament to the New Testament. May iba, may pangalan pa. May iba, may ibang pangalan. Seraphim, cherubim, may angels. At sila ay angels, ang ibig sabihin, messenger. Ang, ang mga nilikhang ito ay ginagamit ng Panginoon ayon sa kanyang layunin. So, angels will be sent in order to bring a message. Kaya nga, angel, eh, messenger. And in this case, the angel was sent to Mary, betrothed to Joseph. So, ano ba yung sabi ng betrothed? Yung pagiging betrothed ay parang engaged. Pero sa Jewish culture, mas malalim siya sa engaged. Kasi dito, sa panahon ngayon, Pahirap na pahirap na yung buhay. Pati, pati engagement. <laughs> Ang hirap. Galing nga kami sa kasal kahapon eh. Pahirap na hirap na magkapakasal. Kailangan dati eh. Nung panahon kung kinasal ako, kumanta ako. Ano na yun ha? Kakaiba na. Talaga, talaga kumanta ako. <laughs> Niwala ka, Elder Ariel? Arnel? Ngayon, kailangan pang magsayaw. Susunod, kakain na ng apoy. So, betrothed means more than being engaged. So, betrothed means they are quasi-married. But then, they don't live together. Yun ang kultura. So, being betrothed, parang kasal sila, pero hindi pa rin sila magkasama, hindi pa rin sila nagsisipin. And so, At that very point in the life of Mary, the angel appeared to her and said, The Holy Spirit be upon you, and you will conceive a baby in your womb. Okay? This is a favor. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Of course, kung lagay natin sarili natin kay Mary, imagine, Right? I'm betrothed to Joseph and now I'm to be found with a baby in my womb. Ano na mangyayari sa akin? Yung, yung plano ko sa buhay na divert. Nagkaroon ng interruption. Yung gusto ko, yung my will for my life, hindi na ayon, kundi sa ayon na ng Panginoon. Of course, meron siyang takot. Yun siyang pangamba. But this is the promise that was given to her. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Found favor. And all of us, I think all of us, kung pag sinabi natin favor, ay ibig sabihin, yung pinagpipray natin at yung gusto natin, sinagot ni Lord. Kaya favor. Right? O kaya binigyan tayo ng blessing na na-enjoy natin. Di ba? Kasi favor nga eh. But then, in this story, we find that Mary was called to be favored by God. And yet, yung plano ni Lord sa kanya, ibang klase. We will continue with that later. But at this point, God has given Mary favor. Okay. So, Looking at ourselves, God, binigyan mo na ba ako ng favor? Have you given me grace? 
Have you given me something that I don't deserve? Meron na ba? Binigay si Lord sa'yo? Yung hindi ka karapat dapat pero binigay ni Lord sa'yo. Malagang maintindihan natin yung salitang favor or grace. Kasi nga, maring nasamay natin, may mga ginagawa tayo, may mga hinahangad tayo, kasi nga, feel natin, deserving. Deserving tayo, kaya binigay ni Lord. Okay? So, sa buhay mo, naka-experience ka na ba ng favor ni God? Yung grace ni God? Yung hindi ka talaga in any way karapat-dapat. You don't deserve it to the fullest. And yet, God gave it to you. The word favor found here in this verse is also found in Ephesians 1. Ang sabi rito, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That's what God has given us in Christ Jesus. A spiritual blessing. Okay. So, if you are just like me, we tend, or I tend to look at blessing in in material sense, in something visible. If something good happens to me in a, in a material thing, in this temporal world, I look at it as a blessing. Yes, indeed, God get blessed us in such a way. But here, very clear, bless us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. At ano nga yon, In heavenly places. Even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. Upang tayo maging ganap. Banal. Sarapan ng Diyos. At paano nangyari yun? In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ. Pinili niya tayo para tawaging mga anak ng Diyos. According to the purpose of His will, ginusto niya to na ikaw ay tawaging anak ng Diyos. Ginusto niya to na ikaw ay maging membro ng kaharian ng Diyos. Ginusto niya to para sa'yo. To the praise of, the glorious, of His glorious grace with which He has blessed us in the beloved. And the word grace is favor. So, ikaw ay recipient ng glorious grace, glorious favor ni God. Ito ay nakamtan mo sa magitan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. And so, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1 begins with, Blessed be God! Kagalakan, papuri sa Panginoon, sapagat ikaw, na nanampalataya kay Jesus, ikaw ay recipient ng favor at grace ni God. The same word that is used for Mary. So, Lahat tayo, tayong nagkaroon ng enlightenment, awakening ng spirit, ikaw na nakakilala sa Panginoong Jesus dahil ang banal spirit ay kumilos sa iyo. Ikaw na pinagkalooban ng buhay na walang hanggan, Ikaw na ngayon ay tinatawag na anak ng Diyos. Ikaw ay nakatanggap ng faith. Malis din siya kay Lord. It's the same question being asked again and again. Actually, if you're doing discipleship, meron kang sinishare na non-believer, tapos tumanggap siya, tapos itinanong niya yung question na yun, I believe it is an awakening 
in the mind of that person. Kaya niya tinanong yun. And I believe that person is already or is heading towards believing in Christ Jesus. At kung ikaw ay narito, at ikaw ay nagwa-wonder pa rin, meron ba akong buhay na walang hanggan? Kapag ikaw ay tinanong, um, dumating ka naman sa point na alam mo na ikaw ay may buhay na walang hanggan, ikaw ay pupunta sa langit pagdating ng araw, at nawa ang sagot mo ay, oo. At maaring sa heart mo ay, Bakit ganun yung buhay ko, hindi pa rin ganun nagbabago? Ang pagkilos ng Diyos ay nasa sa'yo na kung ikaw ay tunay na nanampalataya. At ikaw, in your heart, you know that God, through Jesus Christ, has saved you. And you know that God is working in your life. And you know that even though may mga inconsistencies sa life mo, may mga sins pa rin, but you know God is already in you and is working in you. And you know that God will not let you go. And you know na kung meron kang sin sa heart mo, hindi ka magkakaroon ng peace. Because God is already in you and God will continue to speak to you. And God wants you to, to go to in that journey of holiness and blamelessness. Alam mo yun. And blessed be to God. Because God is the one who chose you, who adopted you, who predestined you to become a child of God. And this spiritual blessing is a favor to you. And I pray that this Christmas season, kung hindi ka pa dumating sa punto, na ikaw ay tunay na kumilala at tumagap sa Panginoon Jesus, gawin mo this Christmas. So that's grace. That's favor. And the, the Christmas story in the, in the person of Mary, you have been favored. But this is what God has planned for you. Do not be afraid. Yun ang mensahe nung angel kay, kay Mary. Huwag kang matakot. Siyempre, nung nakita niya yung angel, it's an appearance of a heavenly being, right? So, matakot siya. Pero ito yung pangako, huwag kang matakot. Huwag kang matakot. And, interesting enough, sa Bible, sa many persons or characters in the story of Christmas, Ilang beses na inulit yun ng angel. Do not be afraid. Like in the person of Zechariah. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. And you have to give him the name John. So ito yung father ni, ni John. Uh, si John Mo o si John... John the Baptist. Tama ba? The angel appeared to him. His wife, Elizabeth, also of age, hindi barren, walang anak, and yet the angel appeared to him. And then in this story, connected with the story in, in Mary, in Luke, ito yung sinasabing, there is nothing impossible with God. Kung ginusto ni Lord, mangyayari. For there is nothing impossible with God. And we can hold on to that. Because God in His sovereignty, He can plan out things, not according to our will, not according to our plans, not according to our desire, but according to His will. If in God says so, nothing is impossible with God. Now, some other reflections on the story of Christmas. Minsan, siguro nagtatalong tayo, bakit ganun ang kwento ng pagdating ni Jesus Christ? Bakit hindi na lang ginawa ni God na pinadala si Jesus, uh, born of king, lumaki sa palasyo? Uh, why not a different story, right? Why, why born in a manger? Uh, why through Mary? Why through Joseph? 
Now, we understand that God is wiser than us. God, in His sovereignty, He chose to send His only begotten Son, born of a Virgin Mary, betrothed to Joseph, so that the Old Testament prophecies that God had laid out would be fulfilled through Him, and thus born Christ, the Messiah, the Savior for us. And this is all out of God's sovereign love for us that He planned out in His perfect wisdom how you and I will be saved from our sins. So, okay, Zechariah, do not be afraid. Wag kang matakot. Okay, Joseph, ito rin, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Siyempre, si Joseph, taranta rin. Isipin mo, yung kung kanino ka betrothed, engaged in a more formal, semi-married buntis. Anong gagawin mo? Actually, naisipan niyang i-divorce quietly. Being an honorable man, ayaw niyang payayin si Mary, ayaw niyang maparasal si Mary. He thought of that. But then the angel of the Lord, or the angel appeared to him and said to him, do not be afraid. This is God's plan. And you're, you're going to be part of God's wonderful plan. Pero alam natin, mahirap. Maraming sacrifices. Maraming chismis. And yet, because the promise of do not be afraid, kamatakot. Because what is conceived or in her is from the Holy Spirit. Kung ikaw ba, mag-reveal, mag sa yung angel, o mangusap ang salita ng Diyos sa'yo, at sabihin sa'yo, meron akong plano para sa'yo. At ang plano na to ay ganito. At na, nung narinig mo, nataranta ka. Ba, mahirap yun ah. Masisira, masisira reputasyon ko. Yung plano ko sa buhay, masisira. Di ba parang si Joseph and Mary din? Pero ang sabi ni Lord, kay Mary Joseph, ang sabi din niya sa'yo, do not be afraid. Sapagat yung plano ni God ay perfect. To the shepherds, the angels said to them, yung mga pastol, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So yung mga pastol naman, di ba? They're out there and they're tending their sheep and then nag yung angel. And a host of angels appeared before them. Siyempre, natakot din sila. Lalo na kung nasa lugar silang, wala, hindi naman sila exposed to, to many things because they were shepherds. And then the angel said, Do not be afraid. Because I bring you good news of great joy. Malaki at malawak na kagalakan. At yung kagalakan lang yun, nang yun, ay hindi lang para sa inyo, kundi sa lahat ng tao. Kasama tayo. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ. The Lord. Ang pinanganak ay ang ating tagapagligtas, si Kristo Jesus. Rejoice, for Jesus Christ, our Savior, has come. In the midst of busyness this Christmas season, or perhaps there's some loneliness in your home, rejoice. This is the message of Christmas for you. Rejoice, for Jesus Christ, our Savior, has come. Isinilang na ang ating tagapagligtas. Isinilang na Ang only hope natin, sapagat alam naman natin lahat tayo nagkasala at patuloy na nagkakasala at walang isa sa atin ang karapat dapat sa kaharian ng Diyos. Walang isa sa atin na karapat dapat na pagkaloban ng buhay na walang yan. But out of God's favor, sa biyaya ng Diyos, pinili ng Panginoong Yesus na siya ay silang na matay sa krus para sa iyo, para sa akin, at dahil nga sa Kanya, meron tayong buhay na walang hanggan. Kaya't tayo'y magalak 
rejoice. The narrative found in the book of Luke are confirmations of the Old Testament prophecies with regarding to the birth of the Messiah. Sabi po sa Micah 5.2 But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. So, dito pa lang may prophecy na yung, yung Savior magagaling sa Bethlehem. At alam po natin na si Joseph na kailangan pumunta sa Bethlehem, town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Kasi nga, nagkaroon ng order na lahat ay pupunta sa kanilang hometown. At dahil nga doon, umuwi siya ng Bethlehem at doon isinilang si Jesus. A fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy in the person of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. Sabi naman sa Isaiah 9, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, the peace there will be no end, He'll reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. So ito yung prophecy na naraka-record sa Isaiah 9. At ito ay na fulfill sa Luke 1. We will be with a child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So, sa Luke 1, nilista yung mga pangalan ni Jesus at ano yung tawag sa kanya. Now, maaaring at this point, Pastor, baka ba paulit-ulit na sinasabi? Bakit kailangan mo sabihin pa yan? Because I want to stress, emphasize that the baby born on Christmas Eve ay hindi lang isang simpleng baby. Para magkaroon tayo ng better appreciation of Christmas celebration. Kung sino ba talaga yung isinilang Kasi nga, siguro yung Belen mo sa bahay ay eh, laging nandiyan every year, parang nawala na ng deeper meaning. Kasi ganoon naman tayo, di ba? The more that we get familiar with figures and stories, no? yung, yung true sense nung, nung nangyari, minsan na, nawawala na. And that's why I want to emphasize kung sino ba talaga itong isinilang ito. Ang pangalan niya ay Jesus, which means the one who saves our salvation, Jesus Christ yung magliligtas sa atin. Ang sabi sa kanya, He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. Son of the Most High. Kasi nga, hindi naman tayo Jewish people. Pag binasa natin, okay, Son of the Most High. Pero sa yung mga Jews na nakabasa to, gets na gets nilang ibig sabihin yan. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, yung pinanganak, parang siya rin yung Diyos. Siya yung kahawig ng Diyos. Siya yung Diyos mismo. Yung Diyos ay isinilang para sa atin. Ang Diyos nagkatawan tao para sa atin. Yun ang ibig ng Son of the Mosai. He will sit on the throne of His father David. will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Again, hindi naman tayo Jewish people, so hindi natin masyadong maintindihan. Pero ito, ini-emphasize niya. Siya yung Messiah. Siya yung anointed one. Siya yung hinihintay niyo. Siya yung magliligtas sa inyo. Siya yung magahare sa inyo. Not only temporarily, but we'll have a kingdom with no end. Siya yung magahari forever. And that's the Jesus that we celebrate during Pasko. Hindi lang sang simpleng baby, but God Himself. 
the Messiah, Christ Himself. Having emphasized that, let's go back to the story of Mary. God rebuilt His plans for Mary. Ito ang plano ko pa sa iyo. Of course, meron siyang sariling plano, betrothed to Joseph, after a good period, kukunin na siya ni Joseph, susunduin, dadalin sa bahay ni Joseph, at doon ma-finalize yung kanilang being married. Doon nila i-consummate yung kanilang marriage. Yun ang plano. But God revealed to her a different plan. You'll conceive by the Holy Spirit a baby in your womb. Again, maaaring may plano tayo sa buhay natin. We do plans. Of course, it's wise to make plans. But then if God rebuild His better plan for you, how will you react? Lalo na kung may big element of sacrifice or chains of plans. Big chains. But as you read the scripture, as you reflect on it, as you focus and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, the Lord speaks. You can hear His voice. Now, how would you respond? How would Mary would have responded at the initial states? And this is how she re responded. Let it be according to God's will. Of course, initially, mayroon siyang katanungan, paano ito mangyayari? I'm a virgin. And then, when it was explained to her, anong ano mangyayari, ganito mangyayari, anong tatawag sa baby, eventually, she surrendered herself to God and said, let it be according to God's will. Let it be according to to God's will. A total surrender to what God has revealed to Mary and perhaps to you. God may have rebuilt something to you and is just patiently waiting for you to respond. And I hope it will be similar to Mary. Let it be according to God's will. Ito naman. When God reveals His plans to you, okay, meron namang nire-reveal si God. Mga plano niya. Nire-reveal niya sa'yo. Pinaalam niya sa'yo. Ngayon, how would you respond? kung meron mga plano si God, tapos pinaalam niya sa'yo. At sabi naman ng Bible eh, na we are, we are now considered as friends of God. Friends of God in a sense na, kasi nga, pag servant, hindi, man, hindi naman lahat ng, ng bagay pinaalam sa isang uh, worker or staff or or uh, Alipin or somebody not close to the master. Pero ang sabi ni Jesus, hindi ikaw servant in this context. Okay? Ikaw ay friend. Kasi nga, nire-reveal ni God sa'yo ang mga plano niya. Nire-reveal ni God sa'yo kung ano yung ultimate plan niya for eternity. Pinaalam sa'yo hindi itinatago sa'yo. Yung iba, hindi nila alam. Kasi nga, hindi sila friend ni God. Pero ikaw, na mananampalataya, ikaw na tumanggap sa Panginoon Jesus, pinaalam niya sa'yo yung plan niya. Okay, dito sa story ng mga pastol found in Luke chapter 2, gusto kong basahin. Uh, and I've been 
speaking in Tagalog, and I wanted to read in the Tagalog Bible. I narrate ko lang. Okay? May mga pastol daw sa parang at nagbabantay na kanilang mga tupa ng gabing yon. Lumapit at tumayo sa kalagitnaan nila ang isang anghel ng Panginoon, the, uh, the angel of the Lord, at nagliwanag sa kapaligiran nila ang nakakasilaw na kaluluhatian ng Panginoon. Imagine the scene. Gabi, madilim, medyo malamig siguro. Uh, nagalaga ka ng pastol, ikaw ay isang, ikaw ay isang pastol, nagalaga ng mga tupa, tapos biglang nagliwanag. The, the glorious appearance of the angel of the Lord. Siyempre natakot yung mga pastol. Ngunit sinabi sa kanila ng anghel, huwag kayong matakot. Ako'y may dalang magandang balita para sa inyo na magdudulot ng malaking kagalakan sa lahat ng tao. At ito ang pinaalam sa kanila. This is the plan of God revealed to them. Isinilang ngayon sa bay ni David ang inyong tagapagligtas ang Kristong Panginoon. At ito ang inyong palatandaan. Matatagpuan ninyo ang sangsanggol na naka, nababalot ng lampin at nakaiga sa isang sapsaban. Imagine, the first recipients of that good news of the birth of Jesus Christ, mga pastol ng tupa. Nireveal sa kanila. At paano sila nag-respond? Bigla nilang nakitang kasama ng anghel ang isang malaking hukbo ng mga anghel sa kalangitan. Sila'y nagpupuri sa Diyos at umaawit. Papuri sa Diyos sa katitasan at sa lupa ay kapayapaan sa mga taong kinalulugdan niya. And the, the, the praise and worship of the host of angels happened. Nang makaalis ng mga anghel, pabalik sa langit, ang mga pastor ay nag-usap-usap. Tayo na sa Bethlehem. Tignan natin ang pangyaring ito na ibinalita sa atin ng Panginoon. Nagmadali sila, pumunta, at natagpuan nga nila si Maria at Jose. At ang sanggol na nakahiga sa sabsaban. Now in verse 17, isinalaysay ng mga pastol ang sinabi ng anghel tungkol sa sanggol. Namangha ang lahat nang nakarinig sa sinabi ng mga pastol, tinandaan ni Maria ang mga bagay na to at ito'y kanyang pinagbulay-bulayan. Verse 20, Umalis sa mga pastol na nagpupuri sa Diyos at nagpapahayag ng kanilang kadakilaan sa kanilang kadakilaan dahil sa lahat ng narinig nila at nakita ayon sa sinabi sa kanila ng anghel. Umalis sa mga pastol, nagpupuri sa Diyos at nagpapahayag ng kanyang kadakilaan. Ayun ang ginagin respond ng mga shepherds. Praising God, glorifying God for what God had revealed to them. This is the message of Christmas. Let us all be reminded. Magiging busy tayo. Maring the midst of busyness, we remember the concerns that we have. Or maring the super busyness, maring ang focus natin ay may divert. But let us be reminded of the blessings of Christmas. And yes, in your gathering, be bold enough to stand in the front Mag-pray sa Noche Buena. I-share ang kwento ng Pasko. Ipangalat ng kapaskuhan ay ang pagsilang ng ating tagapagligtas. Yung kagalakan na meron yung mga shepherds na may lagay natin sa ating puso. At yung kagalakan na yun ang mag-encourage sa atin. To be bold enough to, to really stand as a true disciple, as an authentic disciple of Christ, na magsabi, magkwento, ideklara 
ang kabutihan ng Diyos. Ikwento ang pagsilang ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Ang Diyos na nagkatawan tao. Ang Diyos na ang kaharian ay walang katapusan. Ideklara natin ngayong Kapaskuhan. Ipaalam. At nawa, yung response ng mga shepherds ay ganun din ang gawin natin ngayong Kapaskuhan. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are thankful, we are grateful for your love for us. That deep love that you have for us, that amazing love that you have for us. Truly, it is amazing. Because why would you God Himself had to take on the form of a lowly servant, born in a manger, for us sinners, unworthy. And yet, because of your favor upon us, Lord, you chose to come. And it is you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, whom we celebrate this Christmas. Lord, may you be honored. May you be honored through our lives, through our lips, this Christmas season. Amazing love indeed, you have poured out upon us. We give thanks in Christ's name. Amen.
Let me read the scripture from Psalm chapter 13, verses 5 to 6. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart will sh shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because He has dealt bountiful with me. God displayed His love when He gave the very best He had. Jesus, His only and on only Son. From the manger to the cross to save us from our sins once and for all. God demonstrated His power in Christ Jesus' resurrection. The same promise of eternal life is available to those who will believe in Him. With His assurance, we have hope, peace, and joy. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only Son, Jesus, to stand in our behalf in judgment and to bear the punishment for our sins. Knowing this, we celebrate Christmas with gratitude praise, and love. We pray that we will be able to share this great gift and blessing that you have given to us in others, in our family, our friends, and our community. We love you, Lord. Amen. Okay, thank you, uh, family ni Ate Leona Villarreal, and thank you rin kay Pastor for the message of Christmas. I would just like to reiterate yung message ng Christmas. It would be, number one would be, we should not be afraid because we have found favor with God. Number two is to rejoice for our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, has come. Number three, let us all May we all be uh, surrender our lives, total surrender our lives. So let it, uh, let it be according to God's will. And number three would let us all uh, leave this place praising and glorifying God for what He has revealed to us. So for our announcements, um, all GCF members are invited for our family business meeting on January 8, 2023 right after the worship service. Agenda are affirmation of 2023 budget proposal and newly elected elders and deacons, deaconesses. Uh, to everyone, uh, please save the date for our GCF family camp. This will be on April 8 to 9, 2023. Uh, this will be on Black Saturday and Easter Sunday and we will have our Easter sunrise service at the location. A location and more details will be posted soon. Uh, Ini-announce na po na may family camp next year para uh, as per nung last uh, Sunday, sinabi na para hindi na daw kayo magplano or lumabas ng bansa or go out on another vacation but instead spend the Holy Week on our family camp. Number three announcement will be we are also calling on all GCF official members, the church's different ministries, worship, next gen, new gen, missions and evangelism, pastoral care, spiritual formation, Growth group and discipleship are looking for those who have the heart to serve and sign up as volunteers for, the, uh, for their different church activities. Sign up sheets are available outside the main door. You may also approach Mylene, Nell, or Chebs at the admin office for more information. Um, we would also like to remind everyone that we still have our Sunday services on December 25, uh, 2022 and on January 1, 2023 at 10 a.m. live and on site. A replay will be posted on our new YouTube channel at 4 p.m. So, that ends our uh, announcement, but may I ask if anyone who is uh, our first time visitor or 
uh, worshiper, may we ask you to stand up, please, so we can welcome you. Or second time visitors, I meron po sa tanong. Welcome po. Welcome to GCF Batangas. Deaconess Lani, your turn. Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Uh, Nire-remind ko lang po na mamaya po magkakaroon tayo ng ating Christmas party. At pag may Christmas party, syempre may games, may raffle, may kantahan at sayawan. At higit sa lahat, merong pagkain. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so uh, para lang po sa ating kaayusan, um, uh, meron po tayong pagkain sa labas. Pero para po maayos tayo, eh, akin lamang pong sasabihin ang order. Ano po? So mauuna pong lumabas, of course yung mga nandun sa pinakadulo. Lalabas po tayo sa main door. Hindi pa po muna ngayon, maya maya po at may benediction pa. Susundan po ito ng mga nasa back row. Kung kayo po ay nasa kanang bahagi, dito po, lalabas po tayo, meron pong table sa kanan, pakihanda na po ng inyo mga stubs, ibigay nyo lang po at bibigyan kayo ng pagkain. Kung kayo naman po ay nandito sa kaliwa, dun po tayo sa kaliwang lamesa. Para po naman sa ating mga bisitas na nasa taas, bababa lang po kayo sa hagdan. Pagbaba po ng hagdan, may table din po kayo doon. Doon nyo po ibibigay ang mga stubs ninyo para mabigyan po tayo ng ating lunch. Opo? So again po, mag-uumpisa po tayo sa back row. Kung kanan kayo, sa kanang table. Kung kaliwa kayo, sa kaliwang table. Maraming salamat po at magkita-kita po tayo mamaya para sa ating Christmas party. Pastor Hison. At meron pa akong karagdagang balita para sa Christmas party. Ang maganda po ay meron po tayong paraffle at the start pa lang ng party. Tatlo yata agad eh, no? Kaya lang, we will start promptly at 1 o'clock. Kasi po ayaw na po natin nasa baba. Oh, akit na kayo, akit na kayo. We will start promptly at 1 o'clock. Pag natawag ang pangalan din nyo at wala kayo sa hall, sorry, bubunot po ng panibagong pangalan. At yung bubunot din pong three prizes at the very beginning, magandang premyo po. That is just to encourage you to, to return so that we can start agad the party. Ayaw po natin... Nag-start na tayo, ang kalahati na sa baba pa. Okay? Para makapag-start po tayo at sama-sama tayo bilang isang church family in our Christmas celebration. Okay? So, tayo po tayo lahat. And let us pray. At nawa ang kagalakan ng pagkilala sa ating tagapagligtas. Sinilang ngayong kapasko na ating pinagdiriwang ang kagalakan na yon, ang manahan sa iyong puso. Sapagat tunay nga, ang ating tagapagligtas na si Jesus ay sinilang para sa atin upang tayo ay makilala natin siya at pagkalooban tayo ng buhay na walang hanggan. Pagpapala para sa inyong lahat, pagpapala ngayong kapaskuhan na galing sa biyaya ng ating Diyos. Tayo po, lahat ay nananalangin sa ngalan Yesus. Amen. <coughs> 